So we have Hebrews 6, 11 and 15. We want each of you to show the same diligence to the very end in order to make your hope sure. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. For when God made the promise to Abraham, since he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself. Hebrews 6, 14, saying, I will surely bless you, and I will surely multiply you. 6, 15, and so having patiently waited, he obtained the promise. And so having patiently waited, he obtained the promise. For men swear by one greater than themselves, and with them an oath given as confirmation is an end of every dispute. 6.17, in the same way, God, desiring even more to show to the heirs of the promise the unchangeableness of his purpose interposed with an oath, so that by two unchangeable things in which it is impossible for God to lie, we who have taken refuge would have strong encouragement to take hold of the hope set before us. This hope, we have an anchor of the soul, a hope both sure and steadfast, and one which enters within the veil. And Hebrews 6, 20, where Jesus has entered as a forerunner for us, having become a high priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. All right, I, I read, I read uh, 20, up to 20 here, but... Now we have the Bible study commentary, that's me, on these verses 11 to 15. We want each of you to show the same, the same diligence to the very end in order to make your hope sure. The author of Hebrews is commanding the Hebrew Christians to show the same diligence to being faithful that they had done in the past, persevering through difficulties to the very end of their lives. For well, they had, as of late, been wavering. Oops, sorry. slipped up there, for they had, as of late, been wavering from the faith, even reverting back to the law as a means for salvation. Hebrews 6.6 6 verifies this. And then, having fallen away, it is impossible, since they're so stubborn they don't want to change back to grace salvation, to renew them again to repentance, to which that which brought them eternal life. Repent. Change your mind from doing one to the other. Change your mind from going from the law to grace, and then going back. They're not going to go back to grace, which brought them eternal life. Since they again crucified to themselves the Son of God and put him to open shame, public disgrace, because keeping the law is a picture of Christ's sacrifice once for all. And every time they make a sacrifice, it's a picture of it. The sacrifice is meant for man to accommodate himself toward God when he does wrong, sins. But it isn't meant for a means of salvation. It means to stay in fellowship. So the Hebrew Christian, Christian, plural, were to be diligent in order to make sure their hope for receiving all of the rewards for faithful behavior that God has in store for them as they persevere in faithful behavior to be received when they come into the eternal kingdom. So the author encourages them to persevere in the faith to the end of their days in order to maximize the rewards they will receive. 6.12, we do not want you to become lazy, because, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. And the author affirms Hebrews 6.11 with emphasis by writing for himself and others with him, we do not want the Hebrew Christians to become lazy, but instead to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised i.e. all of the eternal rewards designated for them for faithful service in the eternal kingdom of God. Hebrews 6.13 For when God made the promise to Abraham, since he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself. Remember this in Exodus 32.13 Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants to whom you swore by yourself, and said to them, I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heavens, and all this land of which I have spoken I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. Whereupon the author elaborates his point about being diligent by bringing up the example of Abraham. 
But when God made the promise to Abraham to inherit, even occupy the promised land with a view to Abraham having to patiently wait and persevere in order to finally receive God's rest blessing, God's promise was sworn to by God himself. God swore by himself because there was no one greater than God to swear by. He says 6.14, Surely I will bless you, and I will surely multiply you. And Hebrews 6.14 reads that God said to Abraham, I will surely bless you, Abraham, and I will surely multiply you in fulfillment of God's promise to Abraham, to which God swore to by himself to ensure that fulfillment. Notice that God swore by himself that Abraham, the father of Israel, would multiply and be blessed by inheriting ownership of the promised land, not the church, as some contend. 6.15. And so, having patiently waited, he obtained the promise. So Abraham waited patiently for 25 years, whereupon it is stipulated that he obtained the promise. For a descendant was born of him, who was named Isaac. The promise is incorporated into his son Isaac through his wife Sarah, not through uh, the handmaiden, Hagar, and certainly not through his, his, uh, his nephew or whatever, albeit or his business manager, albeit he previously got impatient and expected his servant Eliezer, sorry, to be a recipient of his estate. Thereafter, Abraham's impatient caused him to bear a son, Ishmael, through Sarah's handmaiden, Hagar. So he wasn't the perfect patient believer, was he? Finally, the promised son of Abraham, Isaac, was born of, to Abraham's wife, Sarah, after 25 years of waiting. Thereafter, the number of Abraham's descendants continued to grow through Isaac, then to Jacob, and their descendants, which number included and still includes Israel, and all their descendants through after, thereafter, throughout the church age, on and into the tribulation period, millions, until Christ came, comes again at the end of the tribulation period, and the new covenant Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34 is fulfilled with the generation of Israel at that time of his coming. Also elsewhere in the Bible, this number is already an innumerable, innumerable number over the years of Israel's existence, all part of God's promise to Abraham, which he had obtained many years ago through Isaac. Now, relative to the passage of time, God's promise to Abraham would be many years to be fulfilled, which would occur after Abraham died was resurrected, received the promised inheritance consisting of eternal life, the promised land, inheritance, and forever occupation, innumerable descendants to be completed in eternity, beginning with the tribulation period, leading into the millennial kingdom, when Christ comes again to begin his kingdom, wherein all of a generation of Israel will believe in their Savior for eternal life and be transformed into perfect human beings who may live a thousand years and who do not sin and who know God's word perfectly to co-rule with Christ over the nations, Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34. And Ezekiel 20, 36, I think, all of this stemming back, I did a, uh, I wrote a book on that, The New Covenant, look it up in under uh, Covenant, The New, all of this stemming back to God's promise to Abraham, which in God's sovereign, eternal viewpoint has already been fulfilled. He decrees all things. Note that the key descendant of Abraham, Jesus Christ, who was born in the first century, who would provide propitiation for the sins of the whole world, who sacrificed for sins enabled God to fulfill his promise to Abraham, which included Abraham's justification unto eternal life, as well as Abraham's and his descendants eternal inheritance of the promised land and all that that entailed for all of Abraham's descendant, descendants which includes Israel, when a generation of Israel will finally trust in Abraham's descendant Jesus Christ for salvation and fulfill the new covenant God made exclusively with Israel. And that's Jeremiah 31 to 34. Take a look at the link here. New covenant. Look under new covenant, and you'll see Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34. The, that covenant that God made centuries ago with Israel, and by virtue of God's propitiation, not only for Abraham and his descendants, but for all of mankind, 1 John 2, 2, all mankind has available to it, all men, to men, salvation unto eternal life. In the same way, Abraham received it through a moment of faith alone in Christ alone. Abraham's descendant 
which was nameless at that time, just your descendant, through you. Note that God's promise to Abraham and his descendants of a, inheriting into the promised land, which includes Israel relative to history and the passage of time, is still forthcoming concerning Abraham's, Israel's, rather, Israel's rebellious history so far to this point in time. Take a look at the New Covenant study. Bear in mind what John 8.56 says about God's viewpoint in the matter of his promise to Abraham. 5.56. Sorry, John 8.56. Jesus said to the Jews, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. So over time, Abraham saw more of the working out of the promise God confirmed by himself to an oath with himself. Hebrews 6, 13 to 17. But the important thing to note is that Abraham had to be patient if he was to see anything in the way of fulfillment during his life. And he was patient, and he did see it. But he had some slips. So the readers are encouraged to be patient and await God's action in their lives. God does not go back on his promises, as some contend. He is completely reliable because he is sovereign and omnipotent. But he works in his own way and time not ours. He's before time. He decrees all things, even though we choose to do things of our own volition. He's decreed all things. Thank God, because nothing is going to go awry. We have a wonderful God to trust, a perfectly righteous, just God. So on the matter of God's promise to Abraham and his descendants of forever inheriting and occupying the entire promised land, not yet being fulfilled in an historical time framework, framework God's promise to Abraham is, nevertheless, completely fulfilled so far as God is concerned, as Hebrews 6.15 indicates, because God is the one making the promise. Remember, he's beyond time. When he decree, decrees something, it's a done deal. Hebrews 6.15, And so, having patiently waited, he obtained the promise, the sign of this being the birth of his son Isaac with Sarah, when both Abraham and Sarah were beyond childbearing, a supernatural event. This fulfillment was a completed promise at the time God declared his promise to Abraham thousands of years ago because God is absolutely sovereign and thereby outside of time and his promises and decrees are absolute and sure. Now he decrees stuff that we will choose to believe of our own volition. How does that work? God is so grand and he's so trustworthy that there's nothing that escapes him and whatever we choose to believe, especially in eternity future, will come to pass and it'll always be good, never any evil. And it'll be totally enjoyable all the more as eternity goes on and on and on. Just as God views believers of the church age as already seated with Christ in the heavenlies, so God's promise of, to Abraham was obtained by Abraham after he waited patiently for it to be fulfilled. Not in the sense of in an historical context yet, but in the sense that God is sovereign and whatever he decrees to be fulfilled is fulfilled. At the moment, he declared his promise and swore by himself. Well, take a look at Ephesians 2, 4 to 7. But God, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even being dead in trespasses, did make us alive together with Christ. By grace you are having been saved. Literally, by grace you have been saved. Actually, literally, grace you are having been saved. So, ongoing, at a point in time, you got saved through faith. And then it's ongoing forever. You are saved, having been saved in the past at a point in time forever. And raised us up with him. Well, and seated us with him in the heavenly places. We're in the heavenlies now. An actual position in heaven established and guaranteed for us by God in Christ Jesus. We're in Christ when we believe. That he might show in the ages that are coming the exceeding riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. So point B. Expositor says on 11 to 15. We want each of you to show the same diligence to the very end in order to make sure to make sure your hope sure. We do not want you to become lazy, but to imitate those who through faith and patience inherit what has been promised. When God made the promises to Abraham, since he could swear by no one greater, he swore by himself. We're just reviewing these verses. 
and we'll review one at a time, according to the expositors, saying, I will surely bless you, 